Welcome everyone to the Writing the Clinical Study Report webinar. Just a little bit about myself before we get started. I've spent seven years as a medical writer in both the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. I've written CSRs for early phase studies, pivotal studies, post-marketing studies, so both within the pharmaceutical and medical device industries. And I've actually been an independent medical writer for the past almost four years. I've worked with a lot of different companies, both large and small, so I've really seen how different companies do things very differently. So I'll try to, as we're going through some of the content required within a clinical study report, I'll try to kind of provide that input and that feedback of where you might see things done differently across different companies. And I'd love if you could very quickly just chat in the chat box and let me know your experience with CSR writing. Whether you have almost no experience or you have a lot of experience, I just want to understand kind of where we're all at. Okay, great. So I see there's some mixed experience. Okay. The learning objectives of this webinar are to really take the information that you already have available, the clinical study protocol, and then your data from your study, and to turn this into a clear, concise submission document. We're going to describe the elements required for the CSR and all of the appendices, safety narratives, and additional content that's required. We'll differentiate the various types of statistical outputs and how you want to handle the results and present those within your CSR. We'll talk a bit about the phases of drug development and how those will impact your CSR writing, so differences and similarities that you may see across different phases of development. And we'll also talk about using style guides and templates to help you really get a head start in creating a very clear, well-written CSR. We're going to start off by talking just briefly about writing style. So one thing that's very important to keep in mind as you're writing a document is who you're actually writing the document for. The audience of a CSR is quite diverse, so you'll have your regulatory reviewers. This may be FDA, it can be other national authorities such as the EMA or the PMDA of Japan. It will include your contract research organizations and site personnel. You'll have a lot of internal people at your company that are reading and reviewing your CSR. And it's really important to keep in mind that a properly designed and a well-written document is written in such a way that every single person who reads it understands and interprets the document in the same way. Ways that you can do this, using terminology that's familiar to your audience, writing to inform rather to impress. So we're not trying to find the most, you know, flowery, interesting sounding language, really using, you know, smaller words, words that are familiar in your therapeutic area, also keeping your sentences fairly brief. You can also use formatting and consistent styles that can really help just keep the document clean. And you can do this by using a template, which we'll talk about in just a minute. You also want to understand how you can use hyperlinking to your advantages. So if you've seen a CSR, it's quite a lengthy document, especially when you consider all of the safety narratives and appendices. So you want to really take advantage of being able to cross-link and hyperlink both within your document and then to other appendices and things that come on the back end of your document. And this helps you to avoid redundancy and also link concepts that really belong in different sections of the protocol. And we'll talk about this as we're going through the different sections of the documents of where you may want to include these types of cross-references. Another important thing is to let someone else review your work. And this is probably obvious as you're writing a very long document that typically involves a lot of cross-functional experts to create. So you're typically going to have multiple rounds of review, so you'll be having a lot of different people review your work. And it's also a great idea to have someone at the very end of your document development to go through with very, very high level attention to detail, not only to look for formatting, grammar, things like that, but also just to double check your data. So a lot of companies will have a QC process or a QA process for their CSRs. Mm -hmm. 